All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to I Command. More season six playtest gameplay for y'all. Um, we've got the community vote coming up really soon, so I want to try and get out two more videos um, this weekend before that comes out. But of course, I will try to keep uploading videos through the community vote, which will last two weeks, ending on November fifth. I want to say. Um, there's been a lot of discussion on the Slack channel about uh, the Mandalorian, the 10-point Mandalorian, and whether he is too strong or worth his points or not. So for these next two videos, I'm going to be featuring two gameplays featuring the Mandalorian, the new one. Uh, I'm going to feature one game where he wins the match and one game where he loses the match for his player. Um, just to kind of show the two sides of the coin for him. Currently he is uh, lose ha has lost more games than he's won in uh, 6.2 playtest logs that have been submitted. But um, his win rate is slowly coming up towards 50% um, as more games get submitted. So uh, I think he's got like 13 games uh, submitted right now. So anyway, uh, we've got a match here between Herbie who... I actually checked the stats, has submitted the most playtest games, uh, I think, of any player. So thank you, Herbie, for all the data you've provided for the project. Also playing against Kyle, uh, who actually has, I think, the highest win rate of any player um, of all the logs we've received. So Kyle, very strong player, of course. Uh, both players very, very strong and experienced, um, very strong technical players. Anyway, let's get to the matchup here. We're playing on new ownership. This is the stand and control, the um, the three, what do you call it, mission objectives here on Jabba's Palace. And we've got Kyle playing Rebels. He's got Cara Dune, so we get to see the 6.2 Cara Dune in action. Also Jin Erso and K2SO with a set of Pathfinders with the Z6 attachment, which is new in Season 6. Rounding out with Gideon Argus, C-3PO, and R2-D2. And then on the other side, it playing Scum, it's going to be Herbie, who is playing Man, uh, excuse me, D uh, Dengar, Migs Mayfeld, who is 6.2 updated, so we get to see that in action. Um, Extra Armor, Onarcoma, the new Mandalorian, Bib Fortuna, who is new for 6.2, First Strike, which got updated in 6.1, so it's one point now instead of two points from the FFG version, and now it triggers during the setup phase, or no, after the setup phase, so during the first round, which I guess doesn't really matter anymore because it was meant to work with Bib, but his ability got changed. Anyway, um, also has a, looks like a regular Claudite Clan of Two for the Mandalorian uh, and Black Market. Alright, so it looks like Kyle playing Rebels has the initiative here. So we're going to go ahead and start fast forwarding through this log. Okay, so Claudite starting out as a senator form. Players rearranging their deployment cards. Kyle ex <coughs> exhausting R2-D2. And by the way, you see the Pathfinder down there. That is the infiltrate ability that allows those Pathfinders to move six spaces after deployment. Uh, both players drawing their initial hand. R2 going to draw a fourth card for Kyle. Herbie starting off with four points, which is going to let Bib uh, give Bib some victory points to spend to focus a second figure. Claudite activating. So I think, is that an elite Claudite? Oh, no, I see. They're, those are uh, extra armor tokens, block tokens. So regular Claudite. Looks like he gave a uh, damage power token to Mig Mayfeld and to Dengar. And then going to go control that terminal. 3PO activating for Kyle. I'm going to slide this map over just a little bit. Okay. I'm uh, going to focus up Kara. Bib Fortuna activating for Herbie. going to focus the Mandalorian and Mayfeld by spending one more victory point for that second focus. Uh, who is this? Oh, Gideon activating for Kyle. Going to move and enter an adjacent space to K2SO, which gives him a power token from his own ability. And then focusing the Z6 trooper. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. The Z6 was changed, so it's a green yellow and it auto focuses. So I think that might have been a mistake, which they'll probably catch later in the game or not. 
Um, but yeah, the Z6 was changed. It used to be green, green, yellow. Uh, in 6.1, it was updated to be green, yellow with an autofocus when it attacks. So it cannot use more than four dice to attack. If you focus it, it's just useless. So, all right, Jin Urso activating. I'm gonna give a surge token to herself and Cara Dune with uh, trust. Both trust goes both ways. Also playing Built on Hope, her command card. So it's gonna let Kyle look at the top three cards of his deck, choose a card, and put it into his hand. And it looks like he grabbed planning, which uh, Jin is going to play here to draw two cards. And then moves up next to R2. Love Jin or so. Um, card that I personally worked on in Season 4 uh, with designing. Um, trust both, goes both ways is a great uh, ability that I, I really liked. I like the flavor of it. Um, definitely... Uh, poured over the script for uh, Rogue One looking for ideas for abilities for those characters okay Rebel Pathfinder, oh by the way Migs Mayfield activated, moved up to that black wall on uh, Herbie's side of the map moving down into that area looks like these doors have been opened here I'm not sure who opened the door on Herbie's side um, but it looks like Kyle's opening the door with these Pathfinders. And now the other Pathfinder that infiltrated in is going to move up and take a shot here at the Claudite. Going to re-roll thanks to Light It Up. That's going to be 2 damage to the Claudite. And now the Z6 is going to come down through the middle. Uh, looks like it was a double move there. Let's Moving his figures around. Okay. So now we've got the Mandalorian activating for Herbie. The child's going to double move. Uh, yep. Yeah. And now Mandalorian moving one, two, three, four, five, which brings him in range to attack that Z6 with the melee attack. So Beskar Spear lets Mandalorian perform a red and yellow melee attack with reach and pierce 2. Going to use Element of Surprise, which is interesting. Uh, since I think the Z6 has a black die. So that's going to do... Oh, is this not? This must be... A, oh yeah, this is a focused melee attack. Uh, so that's going to be 3... Search for plus two, so it's gonna be five damage. And now the Beskar Spear ability lets him then perform his regular attack after doing the spear. Gonna re-roll, that's gonna kill the Z6 trooper. So Mando very good at one-shotting these um mid-tier, mid-cost figures, like these five-point figures in one activation. It does cost a double and did have a focus there, worth noting. And then the child will do nothing. All right, K2SO going to activate. Um, I'm not sure what this attack is. Yeah, I'm not sure what this dice roll is for. I'm going to clear the dice just so don't have a uh, weird duplicate dice here. All right, Onar Coma activating, double moving up to the wall. Uh, everybody seems to be pushing up against this wall here. Cara Dune activating for Kyle and moving up to the center area. Going to attack the Mando here with Element of Surprise. Mando playing a block token. Uh, Kara looks like spent her surge token from from um, Jin Urso, and also focused. Okay, so Kara is using shock and awe, so she's rolling blue red red with a green from the focus. Herbie used the child's force exhaustion ability which forces Kara to remove a dice from the dice pool and also has her become weakened. So that's canceling out the surge power token. And then it looks like Kyle removed the um, 
blue die from her uh, from her dice pool. Now that is interesting because I I don't think uh, Kara. Oh, you know what, guys? I just remembered. I have a new setup here. I can actually put cards up on the screen. So let's do that. Oh, but you know what? Does it have? Uh, I might not have the right uh, version here. Yeah, shoot. Doesn't have the right version on TTS, unfortunately. So we'll have to uh, table that little feature of our of our video for later once they finally update Tabletop Admiral. But uh, looking at Kara's card, if we go to uh, I just want to look at Kara's card because I'm not sure. It's interesting that Kyle took away the blue die because that's a range two shot. So Kara Dune. Oh, she does have plus one accuracy built in. Okay, I just want to double check that. So she does have natural accuracy, and she also rolled accuracy on the die. Still has the surge there available, so that's going to be four, seven, surge for plus two. So that's going to be a good chunk of damage on... Um, Mando there, 7 damage. Onar using get down, looks like he's going to add an evade, so it's going to be 5 damage. And then since the child is overlapping Mando's space, he now gets to do a re protective fire, which is basically like return fire, as long as it's occupying his space. Going to use primary target here, so it's going to focus, and tools for the job. Ooh, wow. So this is going to be a big attack. Oh, wow double triples both surges like this I think this is a max roll oh but Kara's got some surge cancels here she's got, she, so she's got plus one evade from hunker down since she's next to a blocking terrain so that's gonna cancel all these surges that's still gonna be a lot of damage six seven eight nine ten damage going through it looks like eleven from primary target Whew. that was a big attack Okay, so going into round two now, um, looks like, oh, I missed it, that, uh, who went down to the stash here? So the Pathfinder, one of the Pathfinders jumped down this uh, trap door here by Jabba's uh, throne down to the Rancor Pit to take the stash here, so Kyle's going to get four victory points for that. Now Irby using um, Black Market reveals Strategic Shift. Looks like he's going to spend one VP to buy that. And the Claudite is going to change to the scout form. And now it's Kyle's initiative. I'm going to activate Kara. Kara. Oh. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to activate Kara. I'm going to move up and take a shot at Mayfeld. And Mayfield does not have line of sight back to Kara from there because there's a blocking terrain to her left and the Mando is blocking line of sight from the bottom, but she can see Man uh, Mix Mayfield from there. Not going to use Shock and Awe here, so just going to go with blue, yellow, red. Has the reroll, gets the triple from the reroll, has the range she needs, um, but it looks like Mayfield got, the, got a pretty good defensive roll. I think she's only going to do two damage to him. Now going to use Smash for 3 damage on Mando. Oh, she's smashing. Yes. Yeah, she can't smash the child. The child's incapacitated. Uh, even if he wasn't incapacitated, the child cannot take uh, damage unless it's from an attack. Okay, so I'm going to push Mando and then use Parting Blow. So that's smash to push Mando and then parting blow triggers because he's exiting an adjacent space. Mando gets a plus one block, innate. And now we're going to use shock and awe on this attack. So four blocks, that's going to be four damage. So I think she's one short. Oh, she has the reroll. Is that enough? Six, seven, eight, nine. It's five damage. I think she's one short. And then Onar is there for get down, unfortunately. So that's going to cancel that surge and leaves her doing only three damage to Mando. And now interesting, interestingly, 
parting blow triggers before the figure exits his space. So Mando is still occupying, is still sharing a space with the child here, which means he gets to use a uh, protective fire against this attack. <clears throat> and that's going to take out Kara. So Kara's activation ends there. All right, so now the Mandalorian's going to activate, going to take a long shot at 3PO on his way out of the fight. That might actually do it. Yep, so takes out 3PO and moves back into cover. Uh, that will push the child over to his space, but it looks like he didn't do that. <clears throat> The, the Clan of Two upgrade specifically says it pushes the child or the incapacitated child token. So even though it's incapacitated, the card still affects it. Just because it says, it, you know, it calls out that it affects it even if it's incapacitated. Anyway, um, Kyle's activating his Pathfinders. Let's see, where is this Pathfinder attacking? There's a Pathfinder by Onar and K2SO in the middle of the map. I'm guessing is attacking Onar because there's no defense dice. Yep, deal three damage. And now he's going to use Grenadier here. So two damage to Onar and Mayfeld. And the other Pathfinder is going to just stay down there to control that uh, objective. Onar going to activate for Herbie. Going to use Rush, it looks like. What's he doing? Looks like he used Rush on K2SO without pushing him. Then going to attack him. So he moved up to control that middle stash. Now going to attack K2SO. No reroll for Onar here, so that's not too great. Um, I think he's doing 4 damage there. Yep, 4 damage. And now K2SO going to activate. K2SO missing the second power token he needs to do a ranged attack, but does have the adjacent target. It's going to just... Do a melee attack here. Ooh, gonna play Intel Leak. He is a spy. And we're gonna see Intelligence Leak, Payback, and Strat Shift revealed from Herbie's hand. I would imagine he would take the Intel Leak. Ooh, we're gonna take Payback. And takes two strain, discarding collateral damage and concentrated fire. And now moves over and is going to attack. Mayfeld with a ranged attack, which is going to trigger Mayfeld's uh, return fire if he doesn't kill him. Does that do it? Mayfeld's got 11 health. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Does that kill Mayfeld? Yep, that did it. So that kicks out Mayfeld. No return fire for him. And now, let's see. Bib Fortuna going to activate for Herbie. Looks like he's going to focus the Claudite and spending a 1 VP to focus Mando as well. Archer D2 exhausting to draw a card. I'll just mention that Bib Fortuna got an update in 6.2 with a new ability, Illicit Arms. Basically kind of like the counterpart to the Zillow technique where you can discard a command card to add plus 1 damage to an attack while a friendly uh, figure is attacking only if Bib is in a mercenary army, and of course only if Bib is alive, uh, which is a big difference from Zillow since you can't kill the figure that has the Zillow technique on it. All right. Uh, looks like Kyle not gonna activate R two. Not sure what's happening here. Oh, oh, um, we've got an Intel leak being played by Herbie. Oh, after. Okay, so I think this is the Claudite activating. So reveals, uh, what is this, negation, take initiative, looking for a fight, and what card is that? I know what card it is, but I can't remember what it's called. Induce Rage. Start of the round, choose up to two figures. Each of those figures discards each of their, its conditions, then gains one damage token for each condition discarded this way. Interesting that he's running that. Oops. So, I'm going to take Negation from Kyle. Um, 
Claudite taking the one strain as one damage, and now it looks like he's declaring an attack here. I'm assuming uh, K2SO in his scout form. So focused attack. That's going to take out K2SO. Putting Herbie up 22 points to Kyle's 15. All right, Gideon activating for Kyle. Looks like he's pushing Jin Urso up and focusing her. Kyle's definitely running low on combat figures here. Lost Cara Dune, K2SO, and the Z6. Still has Jin Urso, but uh, Herbie's only lost Mayfield so far. All right, Dengar activating for Herbie. Looks like he's not going to do anything there. He's going to move up. He's going to drop down into the uh, Rancor Pit. And going to take a strain, discarding take initiative from the top of the deck. So now Irby is contesting that bottom objective. Jin Urso activating for Kyle. Going to come up, it looks like, oh, using... Um, uh, trust, both, trust goes both ways with R2-D2. So now has two surge tokens and a focus. Going to attack uh, Onar here with the Tonfa Strike. Spending a surge token. Nice nice hit there. That's going to be 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, though, and yeah, Onar's already used Get Down. So that's going to leave Onar with one health. Now going to attack with the regular attack, and that's going to take out Onar. So that brings Kyle up to 21 points to Irby's 22. And now Jin is controlling the stash. And there now they've pushed the child over to uh, Mando space. Alright, that is the end of round two. Irby goes up to 22. Going to buy Celebration with Black Market. Take initiative being played here. Looks like by Kyle. R2-D2 going to activate... Oh no, it's going to be exhausted for take initiative. Jin Urso is going to activate here and is going to come up and perform a melee Tomfa attack on Mando. Interestingly enough, uh, Tomfa Strike was the big inspiration for 6.2 Mando's new ability of that Beskar Spear, but you know a little bit stronger for a 10-point figure compared to... Jin Urso being 7. I'm going to spend a surge token on this attack. And that has an auto pierce 1 built in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, surge for plus 1, surge for plus 1, 6. That's going to be 4 damage, and that's going to kill Mando. It's going to shoot Kyle up to 29 points, and now going to take a, a regular attack on the uh, Claudite. It's going to do 1 damage, looks like. 2 damage. Oh, because it has a built in pierce 1. 2 damage to the Claudite. Now going to play Looking for a Fight as Jin Urso is a Brawler. Uh, targeting Bib Fortuna. Going to play Parting Blow here. So that's going to be... Hmm. So that's going to be Pierce 1 with plus 1 damage from the Power Token from Looking for a Fight. Uh, surges for plus 1 damage. So it's going to be 3 Pierce 1. Just 2 damage. Leaves her stunned. Okay. So now it is uh, Herbie's activation. Now Herbie running low on combat figures since Dengar is now down in the Rancor Pit. Uh, really nobody left in the main map area. Uh, let's see. Not sure who's activating here. So Bib Fortuna looks like he attacked Jin, who rolled a dodge. Uh, Bib Fortuna actually attacks pretty well with that green green surge for plus two, I believe. Pathfinder is activating for Kyle. Gonna move up and take a shot here at Bib. That's gonna finish him. 
And I'm going to move back and control that stash. And now the other Pathfinder is going to attack Dengar, who spends a block token. Search for plus four, so it's going to be one damage. And now we've got... Looks like Dengar attacking the Pathfinder to kill it. So now that stash is uncontested. I don't think we have much... Any figures left? I think just Gideon to activate. Uh, Gideon going to activate and moves up to control the North Stash. So that's going to be eight points for Kyle and four points for Herbie, which I think puts Kyle at 40. So Kyle takes that match um, against Mando with Kara and the Pathfinders. We did see Mando do a ton of work there, but Kyle able to um, catch up and grab enough victory points to win the game all right thanks everybody for watching we'll get you another game with uh the mandalorian for sure and the next one and i'll try to get those up um this weekend hopefully tomorrow which will be sunday for all of you all right see you later